I'm not sure what he's getting at here. I'm confused because there is a body, right? Well, there's definitely a body. There okay, was a, that's was, what I thought. There's a, there's there was a funeral. But people definitely saw the body. Okay. I don't know if he's like thinking they have to put the body like in the courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what his argument is here. Uh, so he's he's in prison for a while. He's transferred over to the Ionia State Hospital, um, which is basically like you know, the mental health facility of its day. And he takes to throwing messages and bottles out the windows into the nearby Grand River. One day, a muskrat trapper finds one of the bottles uh, floating down the river. The note inside that he was trapped in Michigan's secret institution. And he hoped that whoever received his message would contact his brother in Canada and help get him free. Uh, the trapper did not uh, turn the note over to his brother, but said turned it over to the local sheriff. He was like, nah, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, LaBelle ended up dying in the state hospital in Ionia, Michigan, uh, on June 7th, 1956. So he did end up serving about 20 years, 20 plus years there. Um, and would have been longer had he not died. So, so he did not get out. As this story progressed, I thought when when you said the first attack, I was like, "Okay, this is weird," but I think that probably the guy was just blowing something out of proportion. Mm -hmm. And then once you said the second attack, then you started making me think, "Okay, maybe this priest did do something." Yeah. But then, by the end, now I kind of feel like, okay, this guy kind of lost his family and lost reality, and he was looking for people to blame for the problems that happened. There was something clearly, he was struggling with some sort of mental right. thing that yeah. caused him to do all this, I would assume. And that's the one last note I do have on here. I am not a medical professional. <laughs> so let me be clear about that right up front. Not a medical professional. Um I do not have the authority or knowledge to diagnose people, especially people from 100 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's not something I have that skill. That being said, I read this story, you know, put it together, and I was like, what it sounds like to me is what he has is what used to be called punch drunk syndrome. And they knew what that was in the 1920s. Like this, that was a term they used at the time. Today, we call that chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, which you may have heard of because that's something that kind of has become a big deal in the last few years with like the NFL and, and you know, helmets not being properly. Oh, okay. But it basically what it is, is like, if you get beaten in the head too many times, your brain doesn't like that. And you can start getting dementia or mood swings or okay. things like that. And and you did say this guy was a boxer. Right? right. So that would make complete sense. And that's why it was originally called punch drunk syndrome before they changed it to the fancy long mm -hmm. name. Because it was first identified in boxers because these were guys who weren't in the early days of boxing. You didn't have the nice padded up gloves and everything like you got beat. Neat. And so this guy probably took a lot of punches to the face. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm not a doctor. I cannot diagnose this. But my thought is he might have been a really big boxer in the 20s, but then already by the 30s, his brain is fastly going, going downhill. downhill. So whatever he thinks is going on between his wife and the priest might be completely delusional. Right, and it might be completely delusional, or it could be that, you know, like his wife is is telling the priest that there's something not right, he snaps mm -hmm. for no reason, blah, 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 and he's telling her, you might need to get out of this situation because it might not be safe, Right, which inevitably, that did destroy this guy's marriage, Right, but, right. but it, I mean, the priest was doing the right thing, you know, and... yeah. And, and, you know, there's a lot of speculation because, like, we don't know the details of this. But that was what came to my mind here is, like, it could just be that this guy had some mental health issues. Like, mm -hmm. in general, he clearly had some mental health issues. But I'm wondering if they if he had them specifically because he was a boxer. 
that this was brought on because his brain was bruised to all hell. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, you know, just throwing that it, out there because very- it is a thing that I know in the last, you know, 10, 15 years has been more in the public, public consciousness type. because we've had people in the NFL, you know, go into early dementia or have violent outbursts or- because their brain's got beat up or they just like like i believe junior say i'll just drop dead for you know like and they couldn't really there was no real reason he was fine and then he was dead and so yeah so it's you know they didn't have ct scans or whatever in the 1920s 1930s so who knows how freaking concussed this guy's brain was yeah Yeah. and especially since i back then i mean i'm sure Wait, like, was that back in an era when boxing was more or less just wrapping up your fists? I think so. So, I mean, you think about that. If you're doing that on a regular, consistent basis, there's no way that isn't doing some bad things to your brain. Right. You know, constantly getting hit like that with that can, without any sort of padding, man. That's pretty terrible. Yeah. So, so I wanted to throw that out. Like I said, I, I don't have any proof that that's what happened. But just kind of want to throw that out there because it's it's an interesting to me. Maybe maybe people at home are like, I don't give a crap. But it's interesting to me to be like, there's reasons these things happen, and sometimes it takes us a few decades until we start really Realize, seeing, seeing like, like, oh, there's there's a reason we should not be getting beat up all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like at at that point you're like, oh, he's bruised, but he'll sleep it off for a few days and he'll go back to work, like. Yeah, that's great, but you can't see that <laughs> even though he looks fine on the outside, his brain's messed it's up. Stop, yeah, you know, and we we recognize that better now. Mm-hmm. So it's it's interesting to see like some of the things that at that point in time would have just been a normal thing, like oh, you're a boxer, that's going to happen. We we could have boxing and still make it so you're not yeah. nuts. <laughs> exactly. So. All right, well that that was a pretty good story, and I like I like the UP thing. Yeah, we can do more UP stories because yeah, you, you never know those you know those stories aren't going to get told anywhere else. Yeah, so. we can tell UP stories, yeah. but but we're not going to tell a lot of UP stories. No, because there's well, there's probably not a lot of UP stories. Oh, I don't know about that, yeah, but yeah, long winters, man. People get <laughs> people get people get goofy up there. And <laughs> yeah, and bored. So, but yeah, I got, but I got a few more episodes lined up. Um, one I, I started to put together, I didn't get very far. Thankfully I started to put it together before it, I realized that we had actually already done it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what story was that? Uh, it was a, it was a Greeno family story because. Okay. I, I think I remember this story. Yeah. I've, I've, well, I've been going through archives in Green Bay and like found like the original court case which we didn't have the first time around and i was like oh i want to put together this story and then i was trying to put it together i'm like i think we did this <laughs> and i and i looked it up and I'm like yeah we did this episode and i'm not going to redo it just because i got the court case now but but i was like dang it <laughs> like that would have been probably even better if i had that at the time but, see, nah. you know and that that is probably inevitably going to happen on this podcast at some point in time where once we get far enough into it we're going to redo a story that we just didn't even we don't even remember that we did previously i, I try to check i don't so, know so but i mean it could just get to the point where it's so old that you don't even remember that you did it at all yeah to know to check because i'm sure you don't check every story <laughs> you know, i don't check every story, story but so. i normally normally like that the reason that one was confusing was because i already like had known that story for so long so there's like times where i'm like oh i've known this story but i don't know if we've told, told it. it like the next story that i want to tell on here i i knew that we did not tell it because like it was so new to me i was like there's no way that, that this was done and it, it it could be our most controversial episode ooh it may be more controversial than daniel uh, david spanbauer so wow so there you go big cliffhanger there so everybody come back in 2 weeks for that next episode so. yeah so all right do you got anything else or should we wrap this one up no i think that's good we've been kind of kind of going and my mouth is dry I need, right. I need a beverage all right with that we'll wrap this episode up and we'll see you guys back in two weeks with another episode